Hey everyone, good to see you. Uh, thanks for stopping by, checking the channel out, checking this particular video out. Really do appreciate it. Again, if you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. You'll get notified when you know I uh, upload videos at any time, basically. Also, if you haven't done so, check out the website, sixstringfun.com. A lot of things going on over there as well. Continuously, you're going to be adding to it over time. It's a brand new website, so uh, just more to come with that. You know, I forgot about this song for years, uh, and I happened to be going through a binder with some chord charts I had for uh, a, a band I was in at one point, at least trying to get something off, off the ground as far as an acoustic thing goes. And uh, I was thumbing through it, and I found this one, and I realized, oh my god, this is really a simple one to learn, at least on the acoustic guitar, to do solo. The, the, the full version of it, you know, obviously there's, there's a horn and there's keys and all that, but again, this is uh, Tender Years by John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, better known, you probably know it better with, from the uh, part of the soundtrack for Eddie and the Cruisers. So um, it's four chords. It, it's G, E minor, C, and a D. 99% of the song, that's all that is. At the very end, I, I believe the, 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 the timing and some of the chord changes might change a little bit, but you don't really have to worry about that. If you want to play it strictly on the acoustic guitar, you, you're fine. So um, let's kind of get into it. I'll get a little bit closer here so you can kind of see what's going on here. Just make life a little bit easier, hopefully. So again, uh, the four chords, G, your E minor, your C, and a D. All right. So you've got that. The strumming pattern, it's it obviously slow, but I think if you do the timing in your head, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, that's basically how this is going to go. So you can just strum it. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And that's it. So really, I mean, that's basically the entire song right there. So the intro is the same progression. You got the saxophone solo. You go to the verse. You go to the chorus. There's a sax solo. And that's really the entire song. Now, if you want to kind of spice it up a little bit more, you can kind of just pick the arpeggios. Um, so, again, you just got to... I, I don't ever hit the same strings twice when I'm picking it. I just kind of do what feels good. I'm moving around. It just You know, there's certain strings I think I usually need to hit, which is the bass note for each chord as we change. So it's one and two and three and four and one. And, right? So I'll make sure I hit those. And then I'm just kind of, you know, picking some random notes in a way that just, I feel fit, you know, pretty well. So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. So I guess the three, I'm kind of accenting whatever note I'm hitting there. I'm giving it a little bit more to it just for dynamics. So I guess that's just how I do it. I've always done it, I guess. So again, if we go one and two and three and four and basically the, the, the rhythm and the pattern for, for most of the song. Um, if you're playing it in a full band, you're playing electric, I, mean, I might even do another lesson just on the electric to show you some things I can do there as well. And you want to just kind of maybe jam out a solo, some single notes there, uh, you know, G major pentatonic or E minor pentatonic, you know, again, same notes, just depending on where you want to, you know, have that, that tonal center come around. But, you know, again, if it's just a G major... Right? So there's a lot of things you can do there, the five different boxes. You know, you don't have to be kind of pinned into that one area. Um, the only difference that I mentioned at the end, I just think that when the piano starts trailing out at the end of this tune, you know, it's... I think that C is a quick change back to the D or even just a G. It's kind of semantics at this point. Like I said, most of the song, you know, 99.9% .9 of the song are those four chords. In that order the whole time. So it, it could get boring at times, but that's why you can arpeggiate, you can make it your own. But I'm pretty sure at the very end, there's a slight variation with just the timing of those changes. So it's kind of a quick hit from the C to the, to the D, back to the G. And then you go back to the front end of that progression again. So, 
again, it, it's fairly straightforward. It, it's, as far as I'm concerned, a great tune. You know, probably didn't get some of the credit it deserved. And I, I think Cafferty probably didn't get the credit he deserved because they always compared him to Springsteen. You know, call it what you want. Um, I, I think there were some, some good tunes there. But check it out. If you haven't seen the movie, you've got to see the movie Eddie and the Cruisers. I mean, again, we all have our opinion here on, on movies and, and, and our opinions and all that. For me, I don't know. Eddie and the Cruisers just kind of ranks up there. It's just a great movie. I'm not going to say the best of all time, but it's a good movie. I could watch it over and over again. Eddie and the Cruisers 2. Like I said, I like Eddie and the Cruisers, the first one. So, um, but give it a shot. Check it out. Very straightforward. Four chords. And take it from there. So, again, thanks for stopping by, checking it out. Really do appreciate it. Again, like, like subscribe, hit the bell. Check out the website, sixstringfun.com. You can email me. Reach out. Comments are welcome. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.